Paul Gilbert style sequence licks are indeed one of the secrets to shred success, but if you don't break them up, they can start to sound really predictable and boring. Today's A minor lick is faster than a cheetah in a speedboat and shows you guys how I like to combine some of my favorite phrasing ideas into one sick lick. Mellow greetings and happy Festivus, kids. It's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Ever since my good buddy and early guitar mentor, Eric Reason, showed me Paul Gilbert's old school instructional videos, I've been obsessed with incorporating some of those awesome sequenced patterns into my soloing. But the problem is, is a lot of us learn these patterns and then simply play them up and down scale patterns, and it starts to sound really robotic and like you're just practicing in the middle of your soloing or improv, and that's not cool. So on today's video, I'm gonna show you guys some of my favorite sextuplet-based shred sequences. That way you guys can rip through these in unpredictable and interesting ways. This week, everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars is gonna get downloadable tabs for this lesson as well as a couple of different backing tracks that I made. That way you guys can practice this lick at real dad speed, stepdad speed, and pep pep speed. So click the Patreon link in the video description below and sign up today, and even for just a low, low cost of a dollar a month, you'll gain access to all that stuff, plus a bevy of backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more. But before we go any further, we gotta hear that lick again at stepdad speed. Today's lick is based around the A minor scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it features a mix of legato and alternate picking action. Now you could also practice this entire thing all alternate picked for a really great right hand workout, but myself, I like the tonal variety that you get whenever you mix up picking and hammer-ons and pull-offs. All of the fret hand shapes that we're using in this lick are based around three note per string patterns. So that means that after you get these phrasing concepts down, you can then plug them into whatever other three note per string scale shapes that you know. So to start off with, let's play the A note on the low E string fret number five and then hammer on the B and C on fret seven and eight. So one pick stroke, then two hammer-ons. After this, play a single note on the A string fret number five, your D note. Now at this point what you're going to do is to walk back down the low E, so I picked all three of those notes. So it's like pick, hammer, hammer, pick, 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 pick. After you hit that note, hammer back on the B and C like you did before. After this go to the A string and pick through D, E, F. That's the entire sequence. Be sure to follow the picking on the tab really closely. It's going to go like this. down. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So it's like a downstroke with a pause because you're doing legato. Up, down, up, downstroke with a pause, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's important to notice too how cool you can make this sound if you palm mute the up, down, up parts of the picking and all this. So start off without any palm muting. And then when you pick these next three notes, palm mute those. Next part of the lick is gonna be the exact same phrasing idea, just starting off from the A string fret number five on its D note. It's gonna sound like this. And that's all that we're gonna use of that first phrasing idea. Now you could continue carrying that out through the rest of the scale pattern, but that's when things start to sound predictable. It's like your ear knows what's gonna happen before it even gets there, and that's boring as a listener. It sounds something like this. It's not too hard to play and you can get it blazing fast, but I always compare these sequence licks to being kind of like magic tricks, where once you know how the trick is done, it's no longer very impressive anymore, you know what I mean? But as long as it's a mystery and you don't know what's happening inside of it, that's when it's really cool. So that's why it's important to change these patterns up mid lick, like what we're about to do. So after we played through this, we're gonna change it up and play some straight sixes starting on the D string like this. All that we're gonna do here is alternate pick our way up like this. 
A, B, C, A, B, C. Then go to the G string here and play D, E, F, D, E, F. Now we go to the B string and we're gonna play G, A, B, G, A, B. And then the high E string, we're gonna play C, D, E, C, D, E. So now we have two different sequences in this lick so far. The last part of the lick here climbs up the B and high E strings and it uses another kind of Paul Gilbert classic lick that's based on sixes. Again, there's gonna be some hammer-ons in here and some picking, so be sure to watch the tab really close. We're gonna be starting off on an A note again, this time on the B string for number 10. What we're gonna do is to pick that note and then do two hammer-ons, kinda of like the first lick that we played. But then when you get to the high E string, you're gonna simply play up, down, up. So you're picking up those three notes. Let's play the same idea from the next note in the scale, the B note right here in front number 12. So we're gonna play B, hammer on C, hammer on D. Then we're gonna pick up, down, up on E, F, G. Nice symmetrical shape so far. Next, go up to the next starting note here, the C note on the B string, and play the same idea, pick, Hammer on D, hammer on E, big stretches again. And then you're gonna pick through F, G, A on the high E string. After you play through those three scale shapes, what you're gonna do is to backtrack down to the B starting note again and play that lick. Then the C lick like you did a second ago. Then what we're gonna do is to start off on the D note on the B string. This is gonna be an asymmetrical shape here. We're gonna play D, E, F, and then go to the big stretch on the high E here, G, A, B, okay? And then just end on the root note A, 17th fret high E string. So as we go through that pattern, it's like we walk up three shapes, starting from A, two, three, then go back, one, two, three, before we resolve on the root note. I find whenever you're doing those two string pair licks like that, if you backtrack at kind of an unusual spot, like one, two, three, back, it's a little less predictable sounding than if you went one, two, three, four, back, two, three, four. So be sure to mix these up in unpredictable ways by making those jumps forward or back in a scale at unpredictable times. So we start down low with the first pattern. Next position here goes to the straight sixes. Then the two string pairs up the rest of the way. Whenever you play those two string groups of six like that, I find it's really important to accent that first note of every grouping really hard. You can hear I'm really snapping that note with the pick and making the three quick picked notes more like a little whisper, you know? So you got a really loud note to start the lick and then three after it that are a little bit lighter. Whenever you add in those strong accents like that, you get a multitude of benefits. First and foremost being, it sounds really cool and connected to the groove, you know? You get that one really strong accent note that's on the downbeat, and then kind of the weaker ones that are after that. I also find that whenever I add in the accents like this, it helps me stay focused on where I am in the lick. Because whenever you're playing these patterns, especially at really high tempos, it's easy to get lost if every one of your pick strokes feels exactly the same. But whenever you have that one that's a really hard and heavy pick stroke at the first of every group of six, it really helps you chunk that information down into feeling like there's a clear starting point to every one of these licks. And it's not just like, 80 million notes being played in a row. If I was you guys, I would get used to adding in those accents just by taking a two string shape, like maybe B, C, D, E, F, G here on the bottom two strings, and practicing that pattern with that really strong snap on the first note, and then the three lighter, you know, kind of weaker notes that follow it, like this. After you get those three different sequence ideas down, I would recommend trying to take that exact same lick and then maybe restructure the way that you're playing it, you know? Instead of starting off with this one, maybe you start off with the straight sixes. 
then go to the first pattern. Then you could even do the ascending twos on a different string pair. It's all about taking every little bit of information that you learn from somebody else's playing and trying to reapply it as many different ways as you can. Because as we all know, good artists create. Great artists steal. So there you go guys, a hot lick to keep you warm in the oncoming winter months and beyond. Work on that thing slow and steady with those practice tracks that I'm providing on the Patreon page and you're gonna get up to smoking fast speeds in no time. Thanks again so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for new content coming at you every single week. And teacher says every time you ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold, an angel gets its wings. Support my channel and get all kinds of extra bonus stuff by visiting my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. And be sure to have yourself a safe and happy holiday season. Hope everybody out there is doing great. Now get away from the computer, go forth, and shred. Less clicking, more picking.